at it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So hello, everyone. I hope your afternoon is going well, your lunch went well, and um, hopefully we can get some new energy here to uh, listen to this presentation today. So my name is Alyssa Hedenstrom. I am an English language uh, learning instructor at CVTC at Chippewa Valley Technical College in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And so I teach adult English language learners, so ELL. Um, and I've been at CVTC for about, uh, this is going on my third year as an instructor, um, but I've been teaching ELL for over 10 years. And um, today, you're, if you're at the, our students wrote a book and yours could too, this is, this is the presentation. So I'm excited to have you all here today. Um, yeah, so I'm here today to tell us, tell you all essentially about how we kind of fell into writing some student led, uh, student written OER and uh, this exciting project that we hope will kind of inspire other instructors and other colleges and other locations about what is possible and what you can do with um, your resources and, and your students potentially as well. So I'm going to share about our whole process and how we went about how we went about creating um, this OER. So let me share my screen here and uh, get over to my PowerPoint. I know sometimes that gets in the way. Okay. So, all right. Let me make this big for everyone. And of course it's okay. All right, so there's just some of my information and the cover of our beautiful book. Um, if you can still see my face, I also have it here with me. So we have our lovely book that is an e-copy. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, see the thumbs up. The e-copy and is online and I will give you that resource to our free e-book, the free OER resource for everyone. But we also have a beautiful paper copy that we were able to uh, give out to students and and give out to people who wanted it as well. So I'm excited to share this whole book with you and how we went about it and how we did everything. And my email is there for you. Please feel free to reach out if you have any follow up questions. Um, maybe you're also an ELL instructor and want to teach this to any of your students or share with your departments. So please feel free to reach out to me. So we're here to learn about Voices of the Valley and the book is called Voices of the Valley Immigrant Stories from Students of Chippewa Valley Technical College, Volume 1. That's important. We're going to keep doing this project because it was actually, for the most part, pretty smooth um, in how we worked interdepartmentally and we just want to do it again. So hopefully there will be a Volume 2, 3, 4, etc. But I'm going to share with you today, number one, we're going to talk about the idea, how our idea came to fruition, what was going on in our department and our college, um, and kind of what got us to this point of, hey, we want to write a book and we want our students to be the primary people who write that book. Um, defining the purpose, we're going to talk about how we defined purpose as a department and could stay on track and keep our goal in sight. And then I'm actually going to walk you through some of the curriculum we made and we're currently working on getting that curriculum in a re repository so that other instructors can use it as well if they want to teach things like writing personal narratives. So why rewrite the wheel when we have access to uh, things that we've all created? Um, outcomes and success, where I'll just share with you some of the things we learned, what we saw in our students, what, we, what we've been seeing in our college and then our community at large. So our idea, um, it really first started because we were in a big time of transition at CVTC. So um, I, it was this, this was the fall of 2022, so just about a year ago, right around this time a year ago. Um, we are four, uh, four ELL instructors full time. Two of us only teach English language learners and two of us are 50% ELL and 50% another department. So the four of us are like our core department and the previous two years, three of those four people retired after 25 to 30 years of teaching. So we're essentially a new department, a new department of instructors. Um, 
the one in instructor that didn't retire, she's only in her fifth year. So we were all very new to being at CVTC and being in our ELL program. And honestly, for me, I think times of transition, they can be stressful, but they can be very exciting because it's an opportunity to start new traditions and it's an opportunity to brainstorm new things and kind of to get some new ideas flowing and get the blood blood flowing a little more within a department. And so we were in a really big time of um, transition. The other thing is we were in a, in a period where we've been in a period of intense growth. COVID, like um, for many for many programs, we struggled with figuring out how to work through COVID. But what one, one of the most positive parts to that was is that we went online with our ELL classes. And we're back now to about 50% face to face and 50% were staying online. The students love it. It's bringing more equity to people who don't have a car, who have kids at home, who can't get to our physical location, who have to work and they're not able to work anymore. So our program has grown exponentially. We were in a in a place where we had about um, maybe four or five different classes. We now have about 15 classes where we're teaching ELL, morning, afternoon, evening, both modalities. Currently, we have 200 adult ELL learners in our program. It's extremely exciting, a little bit terrifying at times so that we know how to support our students and that we keep doing that. Um, but it's very, very exciting. And we have students from 35 different countries represented. And so we're a highly growing program and in our last, you know, we've always we always had some kind of focus on some sort of culture sharing project. Uh, we felt as a department, it was important to kind of um, allow our students' voices to be represented in some way in the college. And this picture you see is from one of our fashion shows where we would have a culture fa culture fair where there was food that students cooked. Uh, presentations with poster board, kind of like a poster presentation, um, a room where you walk around and look at students' posters, and then a fashion show. And while this was really a wonderful event, it was about a semester's worth of work all week long, cooking food every week, uh, preparing with students, and then that was just at one campus. It was only happening at our one campus, but we have ELL classes at our Menominee, River Falls, Eau Claire, and now our Chippewa Falls campus. So it was hard to include all of our students. Really the only students who could be included are the ones that could be there. And so while this event is a beloved event at CVTC and now having new instructors, all of us new instructors have little people or little animals to take care of. Um, we knew that we wouldn't be able to keep up with that um, with that with that uh, festival. It was just going to be too difficult with a, a lot of time that we had, and with wanting to incorporate all of our students within our entire program throughout the state. So we wanted to make sure that we could, you know, what is a culture sharing program or project that we could use with all of our students that any of our students could be a part of. Um, and the other thing, too, is I think, you know, culture is to some culture is food, dress, things like that. But culture is much deeper than that. And so we really wanted to focus on that deep culture and get into um, what that means. The other thing about the festival is it took on a lot of volunteers. So we were thinking, you know, our volunteers are all overworked and overstressed with work as it is in their departments. How can we kind of manage a culture sharing project that focuses on our students and that, yes, we might need volunteers from time to time, but it's something that we can do within us, within our classroom, within our four instructors um, teaching. So the other thing is we, like I mentioned, we didn't set out to create OER. Um, that was not really we didn't really have that in mind, but we kind of fell into it. So I, I want to share more about that story and journey with you all. And Rachel, I don't know if there's anyone, if there's ever questions, please let me know and people are welcome to share. I can, I can pause every once in a while. If people have any questions. Okay, so um, 
number one, intentional dialogue. This is our faculty, actually, um, our ELL faculty. And so all of our intentional dialogue happened in that fall 2022, around this time last year. So we were in a big planning stage for new instructors. What do we want to do? How do we want to, um, you know, what do we want to do to create something new, a culture sharing project that um, is student focused and, and a little different? So we really had to look at our project idea and come up with a purpose. And I think this purpose is one of the most important things. You know, what we teach our students when they're writing a paper that your main idea is the most important and that your all your secondary ideas need to focus on that main idea. And if it's not, you've gone off course. So we really needed to stay the course. So what were going to be our project parameters? Number one, the project must be centered around student language learning. While cooking was wonderful and a great experience, and while our students love to, um, you know, they, they love to be able to share about some of their customs and traditions, we really wanted to make sure that this was a language learning uh, project, that it was a project for them first, and then other, other part, people in the community and in the college second. Our, stu our focus is our students and we wanted to make them the center of this project. Number two is that we want, um, we wanted to have three student success goals. So our first goal was to create a greater sense of belonging within our students. We want them to feel like they matter and they belong and that they get to know each other. Uh, number two, incorporate storytelling. So we knew we wanted to do some kind of storytelling um, and sharing stories. That's such a big part of an ELL classroom. If you haven't stepped into an ELL classroom, you should. Um, you should volunteer and work with some uh, instructor or some uh, students because it's just a place where cultures clash and cultures uh, express themselves and students get to share so many stories in the classroom and you really get to know about a person uh, beyond religion, beyond um, appearance, beyond job, beyond economic status, beyond um, what your visa is. And, and it's just such an amazing time to share stories. And so that's always been a part of our classrooms is storytelling. So we knew we wanted storytelling to be part of this project. The, the third um, pillar for student success is we wanted students to have some pride and confidence in their work, that it would show them, wow, I did this. Look at the English I know, look how far I've come, okay? The third part of our, um, our purpose. It was to elevate student voices without exploit, exploiting their stories for the purpose of other people's learning. So, you know, it's fine. If the outcome is other people learn, great, but that was not going to be our center focus is, oh, we want other students to learn from uh, who are at CVTC. That's the primary focus. No, the primary focus is the students and not to exploit their stories just so other people can learn about them. That is like a secondary goal for, for people to also learn about who their neighbors are, but our primary goal is to really focus on the students. So um, that kept us kept us focused and instead of, you know, when we had moments of maybe wanting to people please or things like that, um, we really, we and our Dean really said, let's focus on the students. Um, the other thing too is all of us instructors have been teaching for a while in different capacities. Um, many of us came from the Twin Cities area, and so we've had experience with other storytelling sharing uh, projects. So one of the big ones in Minneapolis, St. Paul is Green Card Voices. So if you haven't uh, checked out this organization, it's amazing. They make books, they make um, graphic novels. They make art, they have video, they have podcast of young people and young professionals and immigrants sharing their stories. They have a whole sector of books that are all on high school students sharing their stories. And then, and, and this is primarily immigration stories. And then they have other uh, graphic novels as well. It's just amazing projects. So we had all, a lot of us had read the, these books or been to some of Green Card Voices events. So we thought, wow, this is just a stellar idea. I wonder if we could do this with our own students. 
The other one is through Literacy Minnesota. They have a, a, a anthology every year of adult student writing. So they would come out with um, adult writing and it was all levels, just like we were hoping to do of all levels of English, beginner, intermediate, advanced. And so we had seen that as well and we were it was just brewing some ideas for us. So we really had seen projects like this, but we just said, how could we make this fit for our students? How could we make this work? All right, so second part of this, let's write a book. We knew we wanted to write a book and we knew we wanted it to be stories. Um, and so now at this point, we needed to create a curriculum, which is hard, you know, it's a tricky thing. We don't have a lot of time as instructors. And so how, how can we divide and conquer, you know? So number one, we just made an open folder in our, in our OneDrive and said, everyone just dump all of the resources you know that you've used, that you've seen used, that you see out there and dump it in this folder. So we were all just, you know, on our off time and our time between classes, putting all these different resources, PDFs, images, links to different um, movies or, or YouTube videos that we've seen, different things that we've watched, uh, all, all types of things. So we put all of those different resources together. That also was personal narrative materials. We reached out to some of the faculty at CVTC who taught English comp and said, hey, what do you do for personal narrative? Can I look at your Canvas class? And we dumped those materials in there. We showed all these different materials that we had along with our materials as well. So we just had a big dumping ground to put all of these resources together. So just throw it all out there. Then we came to the point of having to divide up the work. So we have four full-time faculty and we have five adjuncts. So we knew we do not want to put any burden on our adjunct instructors. Um, so it was gonna be up to the four of us faculty who are full-time to develop this curriculum. Uh, we also wanted to make a beginner lesson for our beginning students and then an intermediate advanced lesson. Intermediate and advanced students are a little more on the same lines. So we knew we, could, we had to create two curriculums one that was a little more um, simplified and then one that scaffolded out to more advanced learners. So we had to come up with two curriculums. Um, the curriculum must be easy to understand. So like I said, we have four full-time uh, instructors, but we have five adjuncts. We want, if those adjuncts want to be a part of this project, we didn't want, like I was talking about inclusivity, is we didn't want to exclude any of our instructors just because they didn't, uh like the the curriculum was hard to read or hard to follow so we really wanted to make sure that it was streamlined curriculum so anyone could use it um and uh, i'm really glad we made it this way because now i've had more instructors from different colleges reach out and say i want to teach this too can you send us your materials and that's exactly it not having to rewrite that wheel right um and then student objectives we all had to divide up the student objectives for the different weeks of the unit. So we swabotted it, students will be able to, so those student objectives. So every single lesson has a students will be able to X, Y, Z. So everything had a student objective. Every, every, um, every resource that we created had a purpose and objective. All right, so here was kind of how we did our curriculum. We made sure that this curriculum, we, we decided we could teach this in four weeks. We could do beginning to end a four week run and then give ourselves time during week five, a week five or a week, a week six to do some edits for our students. So um, we wanted to teach uh, this curriculum in four weeks and the first week background building and brainstorming. We wanted to continue that in week two, have like a really strong foundation of just talking and sharing and all of that. And then week three would be a drafting week and week four revision and editing. And something important for us too is our students are adults. They are working, they have kids, they have two jobs, some of them multiple jobs, lots going on. So we knew we had to do all of this and all the writing and all the editing and all of the peer revision in class. We did not want to have this project be 
stipulant on homework. Oh, you can just take it and leave it. We wanted, if we knew if we wanted to get a really rich resource, we wanted to give students time. So we decided let's make this a four week unit so that we can give them time to write in class and do all of their writing in the class with us. And this was face-to-face -face and online. So this was all different modalities. So number one was uh, our during our first week, first two weeks, it was really richly, um, ri really richly driven in storytelling. I shared stories, my colleagues shared stories. We shared pictures of our family, our dogs. We really made it personal that students could um, understand what what is storytelling and why it can be powerful. So we just uh, opened up and we shared stories about our lives. We didn't even do any writing for a while. We didn't do any reading. We just did oral sharing and listening. And so we did a heavy, heavy time on our storytelling and made sure that that was a deep focus that students were kind of experiencing what storytelling feels like in English. Many of our students come from backgrounds where storytelling is important. And so let's do that in English too. As we were looking at stories, we would share stories of our own that we wrote then once we did a lot of speaking and sharing stories together. And we showed narrative examples. What is a personal narrative? What is not a personal narrative? So we read examples and looked at, oh, when it says I, 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 it's all about me and my story, not about his story or her story. It's about me, my, I, talking about that kind of language, first person. Um, we also had the students watch the preview for Lion, this just wonderfully uh, based on a true story. And so it was, they really could get the understanding from us, from reading materials, from movies, all types of resources, what it's like to tell a personal narrative. We then focused on WH questions that in a story, you need to answer these questions, the who, the what, the when, where, why, and how, that is all extremely important. So we taught all about WH questions, and then we were able to incorporate that into their stories. This was the biggest activity I think we did is, and the, our instructor, James, he had taught this previously in high schools because he was a high school uh, ELL instructor. And they this worksheet was the biggest thing that we did to kind of help the students brainstorm for memories. Um, the memories, uh, this memory PDF, we had students uh, brainstorm two examples for each box, family memories, funny memories, sad, things I have learned, places I have been. So, and then if there's any other important memories they wanted to share. So we made sure that students had to think about memories. And, you know, one of the big things too, I'm going to talk about it a little later as well, is the prompt that we gave our students was not, write a story about your immigration journey. That's very personal. That is very personal information. And so we wanted to make sure that students wanted to write about what they wanted to write about. And we had made it very clear to the students, this is going to be a book. It's going to look like a book and you're going to be able to bring it home to your families. People are going to be able to purchase it if they want to. It might go to the library, you know, things like that. So we want you to write about what you want to write about. That doesn't have to be your immigration journey at all. Um, now, many of our students, students did decide to write about their immigration journey, but others wrote about their favorite Christmas, their favorite um, their favorite uh, Chinese New Year. They wrote about um, a vacation that they took or a family member passing away um, or seeing snow for the first time. And so by making the prompt extremely open, we essentially didn't even have a prompt. This was the prompt. But what after our students brainstormed memories, they had to like they had to star and focus on a few of their favorite, most impactful memories. Didn't matter if it was happy or sad, just the most important memories that they felt most connected to. And they had to share those memories and stories out loud with their partners and classmates. And then they chose which one they really wanted to write about because they were going to spend two weeks writing. So. That was the prompt was this uh, PDF of saying, think about those memories and then keep focusing, focusing, focusing until you get to um, 
what you want to write about. Oh yeah, here we go. So that that was the prompt, right? So we talked about using that uh, that worksheet. We kept the prompt open so that we didn't have to force a story because every story matters. So I think it's it's exciting too because we have some advanced students who who wrote um, you know three four pages in the book, and then we have other equally impactful stories that were just a few lines, just a few not even a paragraph. We wanted to keep that open so that our very beginners of beginners and our more advanced, close to academic coursework could write whatever they wanted to write about. So not forcing that story. And you can kind of see, we shared this with our students a lot, that the personal narrative is about you. It's a story from your life. It has that beginning, middle and end, and then you stretch it out to include details and important things about your life. So as long as you feel like you can do that with this idea that you have, that's, that's their story. We then focused on sensory details, adjectives and what it looks like to take someone to that place that you're in. What did it look like, feel, smell, sound, and taste like? So we worked on describing pictures, we, and then we worked on adding some descriptive details to what we wanted to write. And then, of course, all the sca scaffolding for advanced learners. We could take all of that curriculum, but then just dive in deeper for our intermediate and advanced students. So, like, for example, uh, writing a lead or writing a hook we knew that our lower level students would not be able to um, get to that point in their stories. It was going to be enough just writing and typing their stories and using digital literacy skills. So, but with our intermediate advanced students, we could go on and go deeper and further and talk about how do you wanna write a, a lead? How are you gonna hook people in? What's a strong ending? What makes a great ending? So we, we were able to just add to the curriculum for uh, to scaffold for those advanced learners. And I think that's nice too, like thinking about having a flexible curriculum. You know, um, even we're going to do this project again, and we're not sure if we'll keep the prompt open or if we want to change it a little bit and have more specific prompt, like related to food and recipes and food memories we're, we've been debating on. And, you know, we want to be able to use this curriculum again and again. So keeping that curriculum flexible, I think is really important. So yeah, so here's some of our curriculum. I just wanted to show it to you. I believe you can still see it. Can you still see what came up just now? I think so. Yes, right. we can see it. Okay, perfect, thank you. So we essentially put our, our curriculum into PowerPoint so that uh, we really could, like I said, we have all of our Swabots in there for every single unit. We have all of our images, and then we had our photos that we were using. And then we had links to all of our, all of uh, the different, you know, all, all of the curriculum is just right in this PowerPoint. And then we have all of the links to different videos that we were going to watch. Oh, yep, the movie uh, as well. Most of our examples were right in this PowerPoint, but then we had other things where um, we would have an activity and have students read a story, and you can just open those things up for students to read and print at your whim. So, so that's what we did. Our low beginner, our, our advanced curriculum looked just like this, except it went a little deeper and had more and more, um, more slides, more items, but this ended up being quite a few slides. <laughs> so, and, you know, some of it, we didn't get to, we had to say, okay, we can't do all of this. We can't do exactly what we want. You know, we have to go where we're at. So make sure I can. We share this for you all. So I won't I won't click on that, but um, this will I believe will be included in all of the post uh, OER conference events, so that you are welcome to look through any slides that we worked on. All right, so let's go back to our timeline here. Timeline of, of events. Um, this was really a wonderful experience for me to prep for this presentation because I kind of felt like 
you know, we did so much and it was quite a short amount of time. So it was really great for me to almost like a historical marker to remember how we did this, how we went about doing this, how we can replicate it again. So September, October of 2022, we had that discussion with faculty and we really just shared all of our different ideas of what people wanted to do and what we felt capable of doing. Um, November, December, we decided let's do the, the book, let's write a book. And so we created a four week outline and then divided out instructor responsibilities. Who's gonna create the Swabat? Who's going to start working on the beginner project? Who's going? We're looking. We're looking for this resource. Will one of you look for this resource? So we really kind of divided out those responsibilities. Uh, we uh, we did a lot of pairing up, where two of us would work on beginners, two of us would work on intermediate, advanced, um, and then some of us just you know felt less comfortable with designing PowerPoint. So some people just threw resources at it, and then other people cleaned cleaned it up for each other. So we really, it was just kind of a constant, uh, we were on teams a lot going back and forth chatting about how we were going to divide those responsibilities. Um, January, February students, uh, instructors, we wrote all those swabots. We did, we created the slides. We worked on the worksheets and then February, March, we taught the curriculum for four weeks. We finished it by spring break. Um, and that was mid March or yeah, mid-March. So we finished it uh, at that point with the students. It was a really wonderful unit. The students had a really nice time. Uh, it was challenging. It was difficult. Uh, it pro Probably not all of them loved it, but it was uh, most of them did. And then April, May, this is when we worked on some instructor edits. We really edited very lightly. We focused on not on, on we focused on global English and so that means for an understanding so we wanted to make sure that anyone who read the book would understand it but those prepositions aren't correct no problem we're not gonna we're not gonna change those um the 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 grammar we wanted most of the the grammar to be somewhat correct so you knew timeline and so that any reader could say okay this was in the past. Oh, this was in the present. Oh, they're jumping back and forth. We wanted that to be very clear. So we helped students with that. Um, we helped students with some word choice, but we really tried to, you know, if articles uh, and the were, inter were mixed up or if um, there was not, com you know, not correct syntax within everything, we didn't care about that. We wanted it to sound like it was our students and not us. And then the other thing is, you know, this is also a document for our students. They can look back at this and in two years when they're writing with us again, they can be like, whoa, look how much I've grown. Like my writing has changed. So we didn't want to make it um, just this perfect, perfect grammar project. We really wanted to lightly and loosely edit so that it was in the voice of our students and not the voice of the instructor. Um, and to normalize that it's okay to not have perfect grammar to be understood by native English speakers. And then in May, April and May, we pass this off to our CVTC graphic design students. So I'm going to share with you about that next, how we worked interdepartmentally to get this OER going. Um, and then just so you see the end product, July 2023, we published and printed the book. It has 57 stories in it. So now we've done the curriculum, we've taught the curriculum, the stories are written. So now how do we actually turn this into a book that looks and feels professional and that students can look and say like, wow, this is real, this is a real book. So how did we get from there to there between end of March to July? So let's take a look. So uh, we have a wonderful CBTC uh, graphic design program led by J.R. Smathers. And he has a caps, capstone creative project that's student dri design driven, driven design. So these were our two designers that worked on the book with us. And I was their client. So I really, um, I'm on the Eau Claire campus and I'm the full time ELL instructor, ELL only. So I worked back and forth. So they got to have a nice real life a client that was picky and I said yes to some things and no to things and we really went back and forth. So these are students, they are not staff or faculty. They are students that also, you know, uh, JR and I, we were 
we both started at CBTC at the same time, their instructor. And um, we were in a mentor group together. We had the same mentor at CBTC. When you're a new instructor, you get a mentor. And so we knew each other and I was like, hey, we have a project. This is a lot to ask. Do you have students who would want to set our book into a book to format everything and put it in uh, some kind of file like in design that would work? So he said, absolutely. So these are the two students that worked on on it. So they worked on the design layout. They worked on the cover. They worked on the fonts. They really, um, you know, at first they were like, well, should we do two columns? Should we do one column? What if the story is longer, shorter? How do we want to do all this? Do we have this line be black, green, they just made all of these decisions and we walked through each decision together. Some of that was just on email or over teams, but other uh, other times it was more involved. So they, this is kind of a lot of the layout they did. It's really beautiful. They had to get permission from the marketing team at CVTC to uh, use certain maps, use certain uh, fonts and things like that. So that was a great experience for these students. And then while this was happening, the marketing employees and some of us instructors were taking photographs of our students so that we could get as many photos of our students who wanted their photo in the book and then collecting talent releases from the authors so that they felt comfortable sharing as well. And then we, yeah, we did all of that um, editing and formatting. Uh, we got it mostly all done before the at the day of graduation for the graphic design students and J.R. Smathers and I, we had to do a few little edits and things like that afterwards. It was probably about three more hours worth of work. So it really, the students really had the brunt of it. They did all of this wonderful work. They um, uh, worked on it with me. So here, I want to show you. Um, I want to show you our book here. So, um, of course, this is going to be accessible to all of you. But they uh, cho they helped helped with the font. We, um, our librarian helped us with our copyright. And then we have our table of contents, the 57 stories, acknowledgments, intro. And we have our map of all the countries that the students are from who wrote in the book. And then we just have all these wonderful stories with some beautiful photos to connect the photo to the image. We're incredible. Honestly, I'm, I get really overwhelmed. Oh, thanks for the applause. I appreciate that. The, yay, we did it. It looks beautiful. I agree. It's I really get emotional about it because it came from this very small seed of an idea and really blossomed and bloomed into something incredible and um it's been really a wonderful experience to the point where i want i'm really excited to do it again i'm not burnt out that i don't want to do it you know um you can also so uh, we'll share all of this with you but um you can download it here on our website so cvtc marketing actually they were got really behind our project they got really excited and they created an entire page for us where we're, we have some students from the book are featured and we're going to plan on adding more and more of the stories with more time. People can actually click on a story and read the story in its entirety on this website as well. But then if you scroll all the way down, you can download your own copy of the PDF and it's completely free. We want it to be accessible to anyone. It's also on the WISE Learn resources, the OER in WISE resources. Um, and if you are in Wisconsin, uh, any more public libraries in Wisconsin, it's there in the library. So it's at the Eau Claire, River Falls, Menominee, all of the campuses where we're at, but also beyond. So any of those more public libraries in Wisconsin, our book is there and you can check it out. And if you really like the touch of that physical copy, you can do that. So this was when it was time to celebrate. We had a really wonderful, intimate, uh, this was from our party. My cat's coming up to say hi too. 
Um, we had an intimate student reveal and celebration where we allowed the students time to unwrap their book and see it for themselves. Um, and it was great. We had a satellite party. So all the different campuses, we were all at different our different campuses having our party to celebrate Voices of the Valley with our students. It was so exciting. They were all like, this is it. Like, this is what we were working on. They they actually finally got to see it for the first time. They were just writing in Google Docs and, you know, then they really got to see it as a real book. Uh, it's very exciting. We, we're also, we have students at different factories in town too. So we, uh, this group has really supportive president and vice president. So they may even made a cake with the, with the book cover on it. And these men just, um, it was so cool to see them sitting at their table and finding each other's writing an essay and pointing into it and showing each other their pictures. It, you could just see like, and they were just sitting in silence, just reading each other's writing. It was so wonderful. Just such, that's exactly what we were imagining. We then have a, had a celebration with uh, CVTC president, Sunan Beaton Garcia. So we had a big celebration with her where we had some of our students read. So that was the next step is we asked some of our students, do any of you want to read in front of each other? And they did. So we had some student uh, readers and CVTC Marketing also helped us make this story gallery. So we were able to feature some student stories. We have about 20, again, 21 stories that are on these posters. And now they're, these, this story gallery is about to take a tour around different CVTC campuses and hopefully to maybe some other locations too. So here's some pictures from the event. Our three readers who read that day and shared their story. They were so nervous. We practice on so many, so much pronunciation. And then there you can see our story gallery as well. This was our citywide celebration in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where we had more student readers. And you know, it's one thing to write something, but it's one thing to read something in public. So it's completely entirely different. So it was a wonderful turnout. And we just saw that people wanted to support our students, but it was up to the students if they wanted to read again, student focused. And then we were in the news a little bit, so it was just nice to know that we had support and that people care about the immigrant students here at CBTC and in our community. So it, this project was really powerful. Um, we aim to do it every two years. Uh, we needed more time with our graphic design students. So our goal now is to teach in the fall the curriculum and in the spring have an entire spring semester for the graphic design students to work. Honestly, when I look back at that timeline, we got a lot done in a short amount of time and it's okay to have need more time and we need more time. So we're going to do it every two years. So we're going to do a, a year to write and create the book. And then we're going to do um, the off year is when we're going to do promotion and events or just give uh, students opportunity to read and share their stories um, and do that. Who knows? Maybe we'll even create a podcast or something in the, in the next go about. You never know. Students, it, it really did prove uh, some of those purpose for us uh, where we where we came from. We focused on grammar, reading, writing, storytelling, peer editing, persistence with writing in your classroom. It was a writing project. Students grew in confidence and they felt the sense of belonging to our school. Seeing the president of CVTC share about her immigration journey at that presentation where they shared about theirs, it was amazing to see that there was support and they felt like we are we are students here at CBTC and in this community. Um, and they felt so much pride sharing the story. They took some of these books, sent them to their families back home. It's just uh, really, really amazing. So I just am proposing some ideas for you. You know, what ideas do you have for your school, for your students? Um, what idea do your students have? Do they have any student stu uh, ideas for OER? and working with you. How can you work with your department in interdepartmentally to achieve your goals? Working backwards, you know, we knew we wanted to write a book, but then we worked backwards. How do we get to each point? And then do what's manageable and start there. You know, if you can't do a bound book or something, you know, it doesn't need to be that. It can be whatever it, it whatever works for you all. So again, my name is Alyssa. Thank you so much for attending. Um, and here's my information again. And we'll make sure that you all get uh, the link to get that book. 
um, to be looking out for all the post conference resources. And please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to talk anytime about um, what projects you have or if there's anything we can do to support you, or maybe you'll give us some ideas too and we can all work together. So thank you again so very much for your time today. And if there's any questions, I don't, that's, we have, I don't know if we have time, but here we are. <laughs>